Grace and peace, everybody. Here it is. We're in the last part of this series of the promise of living not ashamed, living unashamed versus the warning of living shamelessly. And remember that that life, that decision, and when we see someone, oh, we find ourselves living shamelessly for the very things that we should be ashamed of. It's an indicator of the distance that we have from the promise of God. It's an indicator of, of how far we've actually strayed. Thanks be to God that we've got a good shepherd. And the shepherd's job is to call out to us no matter how far we go. And so even when we find our society or our culture in a far country, legislation, laws, advocacy, they can only go so far because they change and alter behavior, but they don't necessarily change belief. This is where the gospel can put us. This is what God has promised to do to where we were walking in a certain path. And not only do we reject that path and exalt our present and exalt our promise, but we find ourselves free, free to live unashamed. Nothing, nothing to hide anymore because there's nothing there to be hidden. All that was there has been covered. All that's been there has been cleansed. We talked about those promises. Let's look at one of the products of the promise. There was a man named Saul. And Saul was culturally, spiritually, legally a Jew. And it was because of that, that's where he put his faith. That's where he put his confidence in his history, in his lifestyle, in what at that point was his legacy. But then he met Jesus. And when he met Jesus on that road, actually on the road to persecute other people who believed in Jesus, Jesus reached out to him. The good shepherd called out to him. And you'll notice that whenever Jesus calls someone out, he only does it to call them up. He knocks Saul off of his mule, off of his horse, whatever he was riding on. He knocked him off of that. He brought him down low to bring him back up. Because Paul turns to Christ and doesn't run from him but runs to him. Even though he was blind, he, he rests himself in the grace of God through the blood of Christ that now he becomes an apostle. He becomes an evangelist to proclaim and to declare Christ. And that declaration, he's not ashamed of it. That story, he's not ashamed of it because now his story is covered by the blood of Jesus. His story has been altered through the grace of God. That's what he said in Romans chapter one and verse 16. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. It's no longer for Paul. It's not in his mind now about being a Jew or not being a Greek. It's all about Christ. And because he sees himself, he saw his self-righteous religious self in light of the perfect righteousness of Christ, he knew there was no comparison. There, there, there was no competition. There was only, as far as he saw, condemnation. But thanks be to God, because of the compassion of God, he brings him up out of that condemnation. He brings him up out of that shame and he puts him in a space now where because he's been cleaned, it's no shame, no regrets, no fear. Doesn't mean no struggle. It doesn't mean no pain. It doesn't mean no challenges. But every single one of those struggles, pains, and challenges can be overcome in the same way that his past was overcome, that his sin was overcome, that his shame now has been overcome. And now he lives shame free, not ashamed. I want to live there. I know what it's like to live ashamed. I know what it's like to have things to hide, have things you don't want people to find, things you don't want people to see. That's not God's plan. It wasn't God's plan for Adam. It wasn't God's plan for Chris and it's not God's plan for you. His idea is that you live free, literally and within.